So there is a bill, HB 347, that is being considered by the legislature right now. We negotiated some portions of that bill with the Inland Port Authority and Representative Gibson, who is the sponsor of the bill. There's two big things that are changing in the proposed bill. Uh, one of those is the closure of a loophole that gives the Inland Port Authority the ability to override a city's land use decisions. That's the big environmental um, land use authority loophole that we've been arguing about for a couple of years. And in a nutshell, it means that if a landowner said, you know, I, I'd like to put uh, a refinery on this piece of land over there that's in the Inland Port Authority, it's not zoned for it, but I think it would help the Inland Port, they may say, with their business plan. I can guarantee you if they came to the city and asked for a change to their zoning to allow them to make a big environmental impact like that, we would say no. They could take that decline from the city, turn around to the Inland Port Authority and potentially get a yes out of an unelected three-person panel that they put together. That's a major environmental threat and this piece of legislation, if it's approved, would close that loophole and eliminate their ability to be an appeal authority. The second thing it does, among others, but the other big thing, is to distribute 25% of the future tax increment back to Salt Lake City to pay for the city services that we must render according to the state uh, statute, the like state constitution. Um, so that's police services, fire, plowing those uh, streets and all the other municipal services that we do throughout the city. In order to be made whole for that, uh, we need to receive funding as that area grows and this 25% will help us have that assurance. We expect the state statute to be tweaked or amended every single session. We're in our third session now since the Inland Port happened with the state legislature and it's being amended again. Although we're happy with the changes that are before the legislature today, it doesn't bring me a great deal of comfort that that can of worms is going to be opened every year and there will be future mayors, there'll be future leadership at the state, and we don't know what those relationships might end up shaking out for the state statute when they open it. So we'll be looking to gain uh, a greater assurance than state statute with the state and Limport Authority to make sure that these things that we've negotiated today will last in perpetuity and the environmental assurances will be part of their ongoing work.